Hello everyone. So what we're going to talk about today are types, variables, and values. For some of you, this is going to be a refresher, either because you've done some of the other C-sharp videos, you've worked with C-sharp, you've worked with other programming languages, or you've worked with Python. Now, what I want to start out with, though, is the difference between something like Python and C-sharp. Python is what's considered a loosely typed language. Uh, by that I mean you could go ahead and define a variable simply by putting a variable out there, such as x, and then assigning it a value. Okay? And then when your program runs, it's understood that x contains an integer. You can then immediately thereafter write something like x equals bob and assign it a string. And that's okay. Uh, Python is loosely typed. It allows you to go ahead and not explicitly state what kind of data a variable holds, and on the fly you can go ahead and change that. C Sharp though is a little different. C Sharp you have to go ahead and put in your data types. So going with the example above, I'd write int x equals 5, and I could put string name equals Bob. What I couldn't do is turn around and in the middle here say okay, I have int x equals 5, and now I want to do x equals Bob. This will go ahead and give you an error. If you mouse over, you'll see, cannot implicitly convert type string to int. I cannot go ahead and take a string value and assign it to an int. Okay? Uh, I also can't go ahead and redefine variables that have already been defined in the same scope. Okay? So within the main method, I said int x equals 5. Then I'm trying to say string x. As you can see, a local variable or function named x is already defined in the scope. So when you, you have to go ahead and be purposeful with your uh, data types here. And the data types in this case are an int and a string. So again, C Sharp is a strongly typed language. Well, every variable and constant has a type. Uh, a variable would be x. Okay? A constant is a type of variable, a piece of data. Okay? Uh, all expressions, such as methods, like the main method here, they have to return a type. Now, they can return void, um, which would essentially be uh, somewhat equivalent to null, um, but that's still a data type. There has to be some kind of data passed around, um, and that's because C Sharp, again, is a strongly typed language. Now, variables and types uh, and values can all be made up of built-in types such as ints and strings uh, you have booleans okay. uh, you have different types of integers like a long okay. uh, you have decimal places or uh, decimal values such as a float uh, which would be something like 3.4f you also have more complex types. Um, you can go and see here, these are not built-in data types. Uh, these are things like console. Console is a class. It is a object that is defined in C Sharp, and this is built into C Sharp. Okay? And console can be a value. I can go ahead and define a variable called console C equals new console. Okay? This is invalid code in C Sharp, but the purpose here I want you to see is that I can go ahead and set a custom data type as a type for a variable. Uh, you can also on your own create new data types such as class student. Okay? I can then go up here and say student s equals new student. Okay? I have defined a new data type based upon an object based upon a class. So everything in C Sharp relates back to types um, and variables and values and storing data and passing data around. Um, when your program runs, okay, or rather when you compile your program to executable, okay, these data types are used to go ahead and figure out what kind of operations your code can perform and make sure that things are type safe. Okay. meaning that I can go ahead and define int y equals 6, and then I can say int z equals x plus y. 
This is valid because their types are all the same. If I were to instead go ahead and say that int w, or rather, let's say string w equals Chris, and then try to add w here. This is no longer type safe. It recognizes that I'm trying to combine a string with integers using mathematical operations. Okay? It's going to tell me about this before I've even compiled my program. And that's one of the benefits of C Sharp and Visual Studio, that it can go ahead and, and do those kinds of pre-compilation error checks. Um, but if you were compiling this by hand, uh, using the MS build or some other uh, build process for C Sharp, you'd get an error on line 18 of your program.cs file saying, hey, you are trying to convert a string to an integer um, and you can't do that. Okay. Now, there are a few cases where you can go ahead and uh, cross data types and that's doing something like, let's go ahead and look back up here, and get rid of all of this. We're gonna start with a clean slate, okay. including that student class. And I'm going to say int x equals 5, long y equals 200, and I'm going to set um, byte b equals x plus y. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you both examples where this will work and won't work. Now, converting to a byte, um, I can't combine it into the long. But if I were to go ahead and say long z equals x plus y, yeah, it's going to say that's OK. okay? It can automatically convert an int to a long on the fly. And that's because ints are int 32s and longs are just int 64s. Int, short, and longs all are made up uh, of a base type of integer. Uh, and by that I mean a short uh, w equals 3, okay? See, this is an int 16. Just as you could go ahead and explicitly type out int, and you can see now, here are all the different data types that are related to integers. Okay? Int, which defaults to int 32, int 16, 32, 64, uh, and then an unsigned integer, uh, which we'll get into those in a moment. They are all made up of the same type. Bytes, however, are not based upon an integer. Let's go ahead and let's get rid of this. Let's start again with int x equals 5, and then bool y equals true. Now, for those of you coming from C, C++, and certain other scripting languages than that, you know that true is an equivalent of 1, 0 and 1. Okay, false and true. So I can say okay. in C sharp, however, you cannot go ahead and do uh, mathematical operations on Boolean variables. Okay. It does not automatically convert them over to numeric uh, equivalents. Now Let's go ahead and let's take a look uh, a bit more at integers themselves um, as just an example of a variable and data type. So when I go ahead and define a variable, I type out the data type that it is, in this case an int, and then I give it a name, in this case x. x is just a way for me to reference back to this value. Okay? The value is assigned by using an assignation operator, the equal sign, okay, and then giving it a value, such as 4. Now, what you're seeing here is I'm defining what the data type is, and I'm assigning, an equal sign, a value. What x is, is what I want to go ahead and talk about. x is does not contain the value of 4. It's not like a mathematical operation where you just are substituting in a placeholder variable for an assigned value. In programming, what a variable is is actually an address. 
x is an address to memory. And in that location in memory, at that address, is the value that I have assigned to this variable. So I have my address and who's at that address. Okay? So it's living at 101 Ramington Way. Okay? Yes, bad joke, but RAM is what I want you guys to understand here. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with RAM, uh, your hard drive versus your RAM. RAM is random access memory. Variables that are created on the fly like this okay, are stored in RAM when your program's running. Okay? And when the program ends, those locations in memory are freed up. They are gone ahead and marked as uh, being able to be reused, essentially. Okay? So again, when defining variables in C-sharp, it is a strongly typed language, so you have to give it its data type. You then give it a name, okay? your, your variable, your placeholder for uh, what you're going to refer back to in your code, and then your assignment operator and your value. In this case, I have defined an int data type, a variable of x, and I've assigned the value of 4. And when I call x, somewhere in RAM is an address, is a location that x refers back to. And if I call x, it goes to that location and returns to me the value that is currently stored there. The... Uh, one thing to be aware of um, is that there's something called a generic type. Now, when you go ahead and you look at something more complex, like lists, and let's go ahead and using collections.generic here, okay. you'll see here that list is, def is a data type, but it is defined a little T here in its braces, and that's because it is given a generic type. Okay? I can go ahead and create a list of any data type I want. T is the type of elements in the list. Okay? It is generic placeholder. I could create a list of strings. I could create a list of chars, or of booleans, of ints, okay? of longs, of shorts, so on and so forth. The generic type um, can be declared with one or more type parameter that serve as a placeholder for the actual type, okay? also called the concrete type. Okay? This would be the concrete type, as opposed to T, which is my generic type. Okay? Uh, when you go ahead and use the data type, in this case a list, in your code, you have to replace the generic T with an actual data type. Um, now the last thing I want to talk about is um, in C sharp there are two fundamental things that you want to understand about the type system. Uh, first of all it's that it supports inheritance. Now we're going to get into that later on but you have base types uh, such as an integer. Okay? Or actually, let's go ahead and look at it this way. You have a base type such as an array. Now, an array is a collection. I could go ahead and have a collection of strings. And I have a collection that can hold five strings. Now, now then I have a list. Now, a list in a lot of ways, maybe not explicitly, depends on the programming language, but in a lot of ways is an extension of an array. It has all the features of an array and then some. This is I can go ahead and define same kind of thing. Both of them are collections. They can both hold strings. Okay? Uh, however, an array has a set size, whereas lists do not. Lists can be added to and removed at will. Strings cannot. You can only replace their different uh, uh, indexes within the array of strings. Okay? Inheritance is most closely seen when you look at things like uh, custom-made objects. If I were to have an animal, okay, and then I were to create a class called dog and inherit, 
inherit from animal. Okay? Dog would have all the features of animal. Animal is my base class. Dog is my inherited. Okay? I can take one type and inherit features from another. That's the takeaway uh, for one of the two fundamental points about the type system in C Sharp. The other one is that you have the difference between value types and reference types. Okay? Everything is either a value or a reference. Okay? X right here in its uses is a value type. Okay? I am storing an explicit value. Okay? As opposed to a reference where I'm ref the console here is predefined and it exists throughout the entire application. And I am referring back, so you're referring back to that variable, or, uh, that object and its instance. We're going to get more into uh, value types and reference types in another video, um, and we'll do a much better thorough explanation of them. But I just want you to know that those two things are fundamental when it comes to types in C Sharp, that you have inheritance, that types can expand upon other types, and that you have value and reference, um, where you can refer to explicit values or you can refer back to objects.